Wow. I mean, you, you're really Aria. handsome right now. I wow. like your clothes. That's a that. uniform. Yeah, that's <laughs> a uniform. I suggest a uniform. Them, yeah, because I suggest them to wear plain clothes, so we opted for the school uniform. That's Dang, nice. it looks good on you. Okay, oh, Fasha. Fasha is also already here, and Aria is okay. also already here. Are you guys nervous? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, so I'm, it seems that the presenters are here. <coughs> four, but one more, Indra. Indra Isn't will here? join us later. We can start now. All right, so... Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for joining uh, the presentation. So this is higher intermediate for final presentation. And uh, there will be five presenters today. And, uh, mm, and the proctors are Mr. Akbar and, and I. So without further ado so um we're going to start so maybe a volunteer from the presenters who will start first <laughs> no one yeah. if uh, there is no one uh, we're going to choose so mr akbar you can choose mr akbar who would like oh. to, who do you choose to start <laughs> That's pretty scary. Uh, I choose um, from the topic that I have read. Uh, Hannah, maybe. <laughs> Hannah, okay. <laughs> Phew. Wait a minute. I wish you good right. luck. Okay, so Hannah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can share your presentation. Okay. Ms. Vivi, you can mute everyone else besides Hannah. Okay. All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wait, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, Hannah, if you are ready, mm -hmm. so uh, you can start. Okay. Okay. Rahim. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Hannah Odelia from Higher Intermediate Four, and tonight I'm here to present about why Japanese YouTuber should be able to speak English. First, what is a YouTuber? VTuber is an online entertainer that use graphic generated avatars and they usually use um, the application Live2D and uh, FaceRig to track a semi-realistic body movement recognition. And they usually do streams, do free talks and uh, gaming streams. Um, here, we can see two different pictures. Uh, one is from, um, we can see two different notable agencies of YouTubers from Japan. Um, they are called Niji Sanji and Hololife. Uh, both Niji Sanji and Hololife have a branch in Indonesia. They are called Niji Sanji Indonesia and Hololife Indonesia, respectively. Um, the first reason why Japanese YouTubers should be able to speak English is because it will 
be um, a great way to have more opportunities, like collaborating with international YouTubers, like we can see here in the picture. Um, here, the white picture is uh, Sukoya Kana from Nijisanji Japan, collaborating with um, the first generation of Nijisanji Indonesia. And on the second picture, we can see um, Hana Makia from Nijisanji Indonesia um, collaborating with Nur from Nijisanji India. And in this case, I think it will be easier for them to collaborate in English instead of the Indian VTubers have to uh, learn Indonesia before they want to collaborate with Indonesian VTubers and vice versa. Um, Indonesian VTubers doesn't have to be able to speak India to collaborate with someone from India. They can just um, communicate in English. Um, here, we can see um, one of the example when international collaborations went wrong. Here we can see Takara Jiman from Nijisanji Indonesia and uh, Tamaki from Nijisanji Japan. I will show you the example. Taka-san? Taka-san? Ah, hi. Ah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Sorry. Daijoubu desu. It's okay. Uh, so, I am very yume, uh, very dream, and very sleepy now. Ah, I understand. Wakare, wakare. Wakare? Nemukata. Just by seeing this um, short clips, we can see how awkward it is for them to conversate in English since Tamaki cannot understand English very well, while Taka is also um, guessing what does Tamaki means by the, um, the broken English that she speaks. And uh, yeah, I think it will be easier if uh, at least Tamaki can understand basic conversational English. Um, uh, for the next reason, um, they should be able to speak English because it will attract uh, more viewers, especially popular being popular to international viewers, like we can see in this example. Here is Kaurgura from Holy Life English. She has 1.52 million subscribers currently and uh, Sora from Hololife Japan, the first generation of Hololife Japan, she only has 549,000 subscribers. Um, Gorgura had debuted for like six months now um, in December. It's her six months anniversary. While Sora um, from Hololife Japan, she has already debuted from 2017, but she only got 500 subscribers. We can see the gap here is pretty big. It's kind of half or more, more than half. And because uh, Hololife English um, targeting the English speaker country, the English speaker people to be the viewers when uh, the Sora, because she cannot speak um, any language other than Japanese, she only targeted Japanese viewers, not international viewers. For the next reason is because um, if Japanese VTubers can speak English, they will attract uh, more people from different backgrounds. Um, as we can see here, it's Airani Io15 from Hololife Indonesia. She currently has 200,000 subscribers uh, since she first debuted in March. And her main content is usually drawing and art stream and she also does gaming stream, Japanese lesson stream, and English lesson stream in her free time. Um, yeah, she can speak uh, Indonesian, English, Korean, Japanese, and many more. And uh, um, I think it it's very amazing for her to have so many contents in one channel because 
For example, if someone who follows her for the drawing and art, they will eventually get exposed with the gaming stream and or the language lesson stream. And they will subscribe to her and it will add to the subscriber counts for her. Um, for the next reason, um, uh, uh, here we can see the red block of chat here. This is Calliope Mori from Hololive English. Um, the reason why VTubers should be able to speak English is because they will gain more profit. Here, um, it's a red super chat. Super chat um, is itself is pretty self-explanatory. It's where you pay some amount of money to get your messages shown in a, a block of color so that it will get more noticeable. And uh, the colors differs for, from how much did you pay for to send the messages? And the next reason, um, still, um, to get super chats. Super chats usually comes with messages. In Indonesia, we don't have super chats, so we have something that is similar. The concept is similar, but we call it donations. And donations usually comes with messages. And I think. Um, learning English is very important because um, the viewers from another region can uh, send messages in English. For example, if I'm from Indonesia and I send messages to some VTubers in Japan and I can speak Japanese, I can only speak English. And uh, it will be some kind of like a waste because my message cannot get through to them because they cannot understand English. Well, we can see here, this is an Indonesian VTuber, Bonifier Pranaja, who, uh, who is able to speak Indonesian, English, and Japanese. And uh, since he can understand the messages in English, I can feel more heard. I can feel more understood because my message can get through. And if you can put it harshly, my money doesn't go to waste because he understands what the message is. Um, for the last reason, here we can see uh, the Nissin and Hololife is collaborating to promote their newest project. This is a Nissin Karameshi uh, instant meal product. And uh, they sung a jingle for the product and streams for two consecutive weeks. And every week they have three streams to promote the product. And uh, based on what, what I heard, they get a um, very big profit from it. And just I just imagine that what if they can speak English, if they can speak English, um, the brand that is promoting globally, internationally like Coca-Cola or maybe Indomie, if they can speak English, uh, international bigger international brands will contact them. And I think it will be profitable for both the uh, company, the food company, the sponsorship company, and the Hololife or the VTubers and the talents and the company of the VTubers because they will get more profit. And for the final thought, I think if Japanese VTubers can speak English, international fans will be able to enjoy their contents without waiting for fan-made subtitles. And uh, yeah, they will understand it um, uh, from the VTubers itself without waiting for someone who, to translate what they are saying, because there will be always the risk of someone mistranslating something, mistranslating some sentences. And yeah, I think they will be more happy. Uh, that is all from me. Um, do you have any question? Okay, uh, Hana, very nice. Uh, maybe Mr. Akbar, do you want to ask first? Okay, so my question is, uh, in other words, VTuber have to, uh, what we call, it, have to speak English, the skill of English. How about if they fail? in what we call it, adapt and adopt 
English, but actually they have good and sophisticated content. What should they do then? The strategy of YouTubers, right? When, uh, let's say, speaking English is so difficult for them. So what should they do? Oh, yeah. So uh, a VTuber has to speak English, but what if they fail to adapt and adopt speaking English because English is hard for them, but they have a good content. For me, I think um, they, uh, from what I see, because I'm also a VTuber watcher myself, um, they are starting to learn so many languages in their streams, so they are um, learning, Japanese YouTubers is learning English from the application Duolingo, they put it on streams, and um, some of the viewers can also correct them, so we are both learning, the viewers and the streamers can also learn if they want to learn, but also they can, um, if they want to expand their market, their viewers, they should be able to speak English. But if they are comfortable with what they are having now, which is any speech viewers, it's up to them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, all right, Hannah. Uh, uh, it's actually more or less the same with um, Mr. Akbar's questions, but I really need your opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, as we know that Japanese is very difficult to speak English due to many things, especially the culture. Yeah. So they are very uh, persistent in their principle, especially in language. Mm -hmm. um, if you have to suggest the VTuber, uh, Japanese VTubers to, okay, if you want to gain more, more, more money, let's say, or more endorsing, so you should be able to speak English. How do you convince, I mean, how do you convince them that learning English is actually beneficial, not only in this industry, but also in international uh, world? Yeah, um, for me, <laughs> it's, it's very, it's very dependent on the person, the personality of the person. If they want to expand their content, then sure, let's, let's learn together by putting it on streams and um, uh, letting the chat to, um, to tell them what is wrong and what is right, what to say and what not to say in our culture. Um, but for me, uh, by convincing, I think I will slowly, um, not like forcing, but um, uh, telling them that, hey, um, if there's international YouTubers want to collab with you in some way, and uh, they can speak Japanese. They, they can ch speak Japanese not very well, conversationally, but not very well. And I think it will good for you to stream with them, to uh, learn each other's language. So the Japanese, YouTubers can call up with English YouTubers and the English YouTubers can learn Japanese and vice versa, the Japanese YouTubers can learn English with them. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Hannah. Um, how about the others? Any questions, especially if you are a big fan of Japanese things? <laughs> oh, who is it here? Um, uh, Fatia, maybe I see you there. So, do you have any questions? The others? Uh, no more. No more questions. All right, so maybe one more from, from me, um, Hannah. Yeah. Why do you uh, why do you take this uh, as your topic or your essay? I know that maybe you like Japanese, but is there <laughs> any specific reason why? Mm -hmm. um, it's because I'm very currently currently very into YouTuber fandom, and I think. Uh, if there there will be any questions like um, in this session, I think I will I can answer that pretty good <laughs> because I know uh, 
I know what I'm talking about. Ooh, that sounds very rude. Um, yeah, I think I know enough to give to tell something to tell some people about what I think in this in this hyperfixation of mine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, any other questions? Uh, no, no more. Amel, maybe, or Mr. Andika, or oh, Aza. Yes, please feel free to ask. So to be honest, Anna, it's pretty new for me for the Japanese VTubers. So that's uh, like a new uh, knowledge <laughs> too uh, from you. <laughs> Yeah, I do not have any idea about <laughs> that one since I do not really, really like to this watch. This is also a new for me. Japanese <laughs> very new. Yeah. Mm. Very, very new. That's right. But like, um, I, I also watch, I do not watch Japanese, but I do watch Korean. And I think the similarities they both using different language, one's Japanese, one's Korean, right? And when one video, new video come up in the YouTube, there's no subtitle. <laughs> yeah. I know. That would be really, really sad. So mm -hmm. I think your presentations, it's pretty good to show the reasons why they, as a creator, needs to put, uh, or needs to, what is it? Uh, what is it? Can speak English very well. <laughs> okay, no other questions then? All right, if no others, then uh, please give a big hand for Hana for a well done presentation. Right, thank you, Hana. So you can stop sharing. Um, yeah, maybe. thank you. <laughs> so who will be the next a volunteer? By the way, why is there that please stop sharing screen on the blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Oh, I also don't know. <laughs> yeah. It shows it's quite all. disturbing. I yes, thought I it was on my screen. <laughs> no, no, it's on everybody's screen. So not sure See, why it happened. That one? It's the host. Maybe Miss Vivi, uh, you know, the remote control, you put it on the middle, in the middle. No so, idea. <laughs> No idea then. Okay. okay, so yeah, maybe I will, uh, okay. let's see the next step. So who will uh, be presenting the next? Uh, if the no next? one, so uh, Hannah can choose. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. yay. <laughs> oh, yay. No one yay. is volunteering, so yeah, you can choose your Indra is because... already here. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, no. Yeah. I love you, Indra. I love you. Um, because Miss Ria is uh, uh, talking about Korean, me, <laughs> Fasha. <laughs> Fasha oh, very interesting bad. too. <laughs> Let's go, Fasha. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay, can you try to share screen, Fasha? Yes, wait. Cool. Interesting. Ooh, okay. okay. All right, Flasha, if you're ready, you can start. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Good evening, everyone. My name is Flasha from Higher Intermediate Core. So in this opportunity, I would like to present my essay with title K-Dramas are they awesome? So the purpose of this presentation is to know the reason why K-dramas are very popular around this world. As everyone knows, there are a lot of people who like uh, Korean things, either K-pop or K-drama. But now I would like to focus on K-drama uh, K-dramas are very popular at the moment because the quality of the shots are great and the actors and actresses have good appearance and also acting skills and they do not have many episodes compared to Sinetron. 
And um, maybe in here, everyone know what, what are K-dramas, but I would like to uh, explain it a little bit. Uh, what, is, what are K-dramas? K-dramas are a televised uh, drama made in South Korea with Korean language and most of them uh, in a miniseries format. As you know from the definitions, K-drama actually a televised drama, but why everyone around the world can watch K-drama is because there are a lot of application that um, airs K-drama. For example, like iFlix, uh, Fayou, Viki, and Netflix. But now I will choose Netflix for example, because Netflix is a website from USA that airs um, many good movies and also series around the world. For K dramas in Netflix, uh, it more it airs more than twenty K dramas in twenty twenty. So I think it's a quite high uh, number for for series because compared to Indonesia, we don't have much. Um, we don't have much series to airs in Netflix. However, some people still think that K dramas are overrated. It because they just think with their own opinion, but they never watch K drama. K drama deserve a high rates too because the first is uh k dramas quality are the k drama k dramas quality is good because they use uh because they use high quality of cam because they use high quality of camera and it can be proven by rewatching old k drama like 10 years ago or 5 years ago k drama you can still watch them comfortably in hd quality and also beside that, the cameraman know about the shot, about the good angle. So they don't shots uh, like uh, whatever they want. Like they they know about the good angle uh, to make the actors and actresses look better. The the actors and actresses have good appearance and. Um, when there is uh, when there is new K dramas air in Netflix or Fayou or every anything in applications, um, people would like to ask what is the actor and also who is the actresses, and because when the actors and actresses is interested, people will want to watch them. And besides the appearance, acting skills also need for uh, for actor and also actresses. One of acting skills to one of acting skills that need is the chemistry of the couple. Uh, why chemistry is really important is because when the main cast don't have good chemistry, they cannot do the acting well, they will feel awkward and the drama will not feel real. And uh, anyway, uh, K-drama have not a lot of episodes compared to Indonesia Sinetron. K-drama only have, uh, usually have 16 episodes. So because of that, the storyline will uh, clear and and people will not get bored while watching the drama. I think that's all of my uh, presentation. Do you have any question? Um, okay, uh, Fasha, thank you. Nice presentation. So uh, my question. Um, so I I see that you mentioned 
K-dramas compared to Indonesian? So in my opinion, I don't know. I just actually expect you to compare it with maybe US series or maybe British series like that. Because I think it's, yeah. So we can see which one is more, uh, which one is better than, but it's okay. But uh, you say you compare to Indonesia like Sinetron. So I think it's no, I don't know. For me, it's uh, not really relevant for me. Talking of, okay, talking about this good skill in K-drama. You mentioned the good skill and you only mentioned the good chemistry. Okay. Uh, what can you say about the good chemistry? I think you can explain more than that. Okay. Uh, you can see when the chemistry is good. When you watch uh, like a behind the scene in YouTube, it will look it's it will look the chemistry is good when the cast have like loving each other and then like best friends and yeah i think that mm, okay so um this is the last one i think i really want to know your personal opinion about how if k dramas compare to like a US TV series or maybe British TV series. What do you think about that? Do you still want to say that they have a good quality of a good acting skills and also good shots? Uh, I think compared to like Hollywood series, uh, K-dramas is not, uh, what is it like, uh, far have a different have a different quality like far they just like a little bit i think because uh when i watch k dramas it's also like comfortably to watch like i don't have any any like big problem when i watch k dramas okay all right thank you fasha for your answers uh, mr akbar uh, do you have any questions? Okay, so uh, about Korean drama, right? <laughs> it's really popular. So my question, I have two questions. Uh, the first question is compared to if you uh, you said that you compare it with Sinetron, like uh, you as you mentioned before, uh, compared to let's say Indian. Uh, in in the Asia Asia area, Indian, Turkey or Japan. Let's say Indian, right? Indian movie or yeah, Indian movies. Uh, which one that is better in you know the actor and the actress building chemistry? You you know that uh, you know the movie of Indian like uh, Kuch Kuch or something like that. Mohabbatain, right? Yes. Has the same uh, chemistry between the actors and the actress. Uh, can you explain which one is better according to you? I think K dramas better because when I watch uh, like Hollywood series, um, the storyline is is not clear with the title but for the chemistry um, I don't have any feeling that they have a good chemistry because I cannot see like the uh, what is it like behind the scene and also like the effects of Hollywood series sometimes is too over so I cannot feel like oh their chemistry is good because they have the effect like the zooming and then the zoom out, it's too over. So, yeah. Okay, so my second question is, uh, compared to, let's say, Miss Vivi mentioned before, series like in a British series, like Sherlock Holmes, if you ever watched it, Sherlock Holmes, Benedict Cumberbatch. So 
it has the good angels too and the chemistry it's like a real it's like a real story but actually it's just a fiction so can you tell me uh, what is the difference between those chemistry uh, I think for K dramas uh, most of K dramas that I watch is like a romance like a romance one and um, the story is not to to fiction like the 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 Hollywood the British one, so I think uh, K dramas uh not not uh, like uh far lose far from the the from the British one, but uh British one is better because sometimes uh. I still meet like a uh, little bit problem with uh, K-drama, but it's okay, not like a big deal. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay Mr. Akbar, so uh, maybe from the audience, uh, do you have any questions, K-drama lovers? Let's go. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, <laughs> oh. Ms. Ria, please. Uh, no, I let Miss Amel first. Oh, oh, oh okay, Miss Amel, please. Oh, uh, so, sorry, I cannot turn on my camera since yeah, surroundings happening, sorry. <laughs> so, um, hello, Pasha. Uh, because I, I, I'll be honest with you, I rarely watch K-dramas, but the one, uh, but I usually watch American series and also British series such as The Crown, Sherlock, even uh, Game of Thrones, something like that. But one thing for sure is this. I think this is more on the technical question. Um, why, uh, why is K drama? Why does K drama only have one season, even though they are very, very popular? It dif it is different from American series, like such as Game of Thrones. They have eight seasons. Sherlock Holmes, they have four seasons. Hannibal, they almost have four seasons also. Um, so based from your um, you know, research perhaps, uh, is there any reason why, even though they are very popular, why do you think they only have one season? I believe uh, most people, they really want to watch it again and again. They, they want to watch Nam Dosa, uh, what is it, what is name? Ji Pyong, tell me again, right? But, but why is it only one season? Why? Why there is no two season, second season? Yeah, any reason uh, for that? Because K drama actually is like a televised drama made in Korea. So uh, I've ever heard in from my friends, she said that Korean people can get easily bored when they watch a uh, series with a uh, same title with the same story so they want to have like a new one mm, i see so they uh they will get bored yeah uh, there are lots of seasons in one title yes okay thank you thank you so much Masha, for your answer okay okay next questions miss ria please okay uh, as a big fans of gay drama, I think my questions could be pretty important for uh, the future. So, you know, commercials is one of the most important part if you want to produce a kind of drama or TV series, right? Because they provide the financial support. Um, as we are international fans, how should we support them? Because we do not watch from televisions, right? Which uh, we watch from Netflix uh, and any other platforms. So how we also contribute to the K-drama so that the producers or, um, yeah, to, the producers to produce a lot of K-dramas. Mm. Uh, 
I think we can do with like our appreciate appreciate with uh, like posts on our social media such as like Twitter or Instagram and sometimes there is like a vote for like the best K-drama, the best actors and actresses and I think from there we can share that we appreciate the the uh, the actors, the actresses, the they are uh, they will contribute with the drama. Oh, so basically we need to make them more popular, so they will get a financial support. Uh, what is it from Korea? Other than commercial, that's what you mean. Yes, like for example, like um, a lot of fans in Indonesia, like mm -hmm. like Lee Min Ho, mm -hmm. and now Lee Min Ho is uh, contribute with Lazada, right? So I think it's one of the example, like we um, every year them like that. That's a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, all right. So any other questions maybe still? Maybe other students who likes K-drama also? Okay. No more? If no more questions, so please give a big applause for Rafasha for uh, presenting very good. Thank you, Rafasha. Well done. Awesome. Right now. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> nice ending. <laughs> everyone for your attention. Have a good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, so um, Fasha, you can choose your uh, next friend to present. Arya. Arya, okay, there you go, Arya. Okay. Okay, so if you are ready, you can start. Okay, Miss. Okay. okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, everyone. My name is Arya Putra Perdana from High Intermediate Four, and today I will be explaining my presentation about why people should still be interested in film photography. Film photography was introduced by George Eastman in 1885. His earliest camera was first offered for sale in 1888. Many people think that nowadays film photography is useless. It is slow expensive and it is hard to use because you must set it all manually. Meanwhile, digital photography is a lot faster, cheaper and a lot easier to use. But if you think clearly, film photography is not bad as you think. Sure, it is slow and expensive, but there are some reasons why you should still try from film photography that I'm, that I'm gonna explain it in the next few slides. Reason number one is film photography teaches us to enjoy the process of creating a photo. Processing a photo takes a lot of time. It requires patience and consistency. It, it needs the right chemical to process your photo and if you fail, you must start all over again. You must understand the, your, how your camera works too. The most common film cameras that people use is 
an SLR or single lens reflex, which is in the right image. It is a Leica M6. It is a brand from Germany. Leica stands for Leeds Camera. Leeds is, is the founder of the brand. And this camera is well known uh, from its durability at this time, which is around 1985. Since it is manual camera, you must set it all manually. You must set the three exposure, which is shutter speed, aperture, and ASA. Shutter speed is how fast your camera capture the image. Aperture is how much the light come through your camera. And ASA is how sensitive your film within uh, responded to the light. You must compose it correctly. But, and if you fail, you burn the whole camera and you just waste your a lot of money because one roll of film only contains maximum of 36 frames. Reason number two is film cameras are cheaper than digital cameras. Many people consider Film cameras are as a junk and just for a decoration. You can find film camera with a one tenth price of a digital camera. People also think that film cameras cannot produce better image than digital camera. Well, that is not true. Film cameras can also produce some better image and sharp image too. You can produce better image with better and different quality of types of films. In this slide, you, you can see the two types of different films. The left side is Kodak Portra, which is color film. It is specialized as a portrait film. You can see in the name Kodak Portra and Kodak and Portrait. It is pro, it produced some really good skin tone and a really good shadow, while in the other hand is black and white film photography, which is lamography. It is actually a landscape film, but if you want it to make it to be a portrait film, you must be creative and expose the exposure correctly. Reason number three is some colors and contrast in films cannot be achieved by digital camera. Digital camera use sensors to capture image. The image that captured by the digital camera tends to look pale because it only capture raw pictures. And you can edit it in Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. While film cameras depend on what film is used. You, it can produce some really good contrast and film and sharpness out of it without editing it first. Each brand of film contains unique colors and contrast best based on your preference. In this slide, we can see the difference between Fujicolor C200 and Kodak Color Plus 200. Fuji tends to produce some colder image and orange, the more orange skin tone. And it is suitable for outdoor because it, it really produces some really good green shadows. And Kodak produced some really good skin tone. We can see here he did the film produce some smooth skin tone. And the film itself, it, it's actually suitable for indoor photography. The difference here is we can see Kodak and Fuji. Kodak tends to produce more fader image because it is for indoor. Since film photography uses films as the medium that contains different colors based on the chemical inside, it will give a more vintage and uh, unique results. 
if you love photography, you must try film photography. It may take a longer <laughs> process, but in the end, it also teach us the basics and appreciate an image even more. Okay, that's it for my presentation. If you have any question, feel free to ask and I will do my best to answer it. Okay, thank you, Arya. That's also a nice presentation. Okay, I will go to Mr. Akbar first. You can ask a question, Mr. Akbar. Okay, wow. Interesting. Okay, so it's talk about, uh, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, what do you think? The first question is, what do you think about the opportunity of uh, film photography compared to digital photography? Because as we know that it's one of the cultural shifting nowadays, right? Okay. It's a okay. cultural shifting. How uh, do you explain it about the opportunity? Okay, Mr. That is a good question. Thank you. Okay. In my opinion, film photography is, I didn't think it is a business photography. I think you can use it as, just as a hobby, but some people make it as a business. But if you consider it, it takes a longer process and it also has a high percentage of the image tend to fail. While digital photography is a lot faster and cheaper. So people will invest more compared film photography. Okay, that's it. Okay. Okay, so the next question is, you said that uh, film photography, it's cheaper and uh, it has a better contrast and color, right? Okay. But yes. uh, by the cultural shifting this era of uh, camera and photography. So how to revitalize that film photography this era? You know, revitalize to make it uh, film photography as something that important that we cannot uh, put aside, oh, right? Okay. okay. Uh, I think film photography nowadays is more a lot of young people more interested in film photography because many photographers that promoting this actually bringing back the culture the film culture into back into life because uh, film photography like there is these scans there is a physical stance that can that can, you can keep maybe for about in your lifetime maybe while digital photography just you just shot an image and put it in the hard disk and it just maybe formatted by other people and i think for this for this culture to come back there is one man that i don't know who but it just uh, history like like it keeps repeating itself for example uh, in the in the 90s you use you use typewriter and mm -hmm. there is a keyboard and in the 2000 in the year 2000 there is like this keyboard that that give a lot uh, easier to use and uh, like, over the year this this old typewriter is started to to rise again to give this more unique experience that our, that our generation haven't felt yet so yes Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Akbar. So uh, my question is, suppose that uh, I'm interested in film photography. So you mentioned on your essay, there are three reasons why. So I think you see, you say it in, you say about the positive things. So I, need, I really need to know about what are the challenges for, for us. Let's, let's say for myself, if I, I'm really interested in uh, film photography. Okay, okay, Miss, thank you for the question. Okay, 
I think there is uh, there's the disadvantage using film. The first one is there is a, just like I, ex I explained earlier, there is a high percentage of if you doesn't develop your film correctly, it is fail. It, you just fail to process your film that cannot produce this image. You must just like what I uh, explained in the first uh, the, in the second slide that you you need the correct chemical and the correct technique to process your film. The second one, and if you fail, you just like waste a lot of money because one roll of film nowadays is 19,000 rupees for one roll. One roll on, can only shoot 36 frames. So you can only shoot 36 pictures from one roll. So yeah, it is a lot of risk to invest in one roll. So you must compose it correctly. Oh, I see. So can I say that because of that challenges, so people nowadays switch to a digital camera rather than in uh, yes. film photography, right? Yes. Um, so uh, second question, let's say uh, you said that it is not for commercial, but let, but is it is it possible to be to be used for commercial thing, uh, Arya? Yes, it is actually possible. Some people did it actually. He is a wedding photographer from Bali. Uh, his name is Denny Alindra. He takes film photography as commercial shots uh, as the main income for its life. So yeah, I think it's possible with the right technique and right requirements, you should be able to make it as a business photography. Okay, I think that's all from me. So maybe uh, in here we have Mr. Andika. He is a photographer. Uh, do you have any questions, okay. Mr. Andika? I, I uh, suppose that you know a lot about okay. it. Okay, so have you ever tried the film photography, the film camera? Uh, me? Yeah. I personally have tried uh -huh. and I failed a lot until I can expose manually. I would be able to expose manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my first camera is actually an SLR camera, just what I explained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I just studied over the year and I will be and I will I able to master it over there okay so you are already able uh, not already able, let's say you have tried the film and the digital one so which one in your opinion that you prefer to use it and also about by your own camera that film and the digital one, which one that produce, let's say, better image, like the noises and so on? Okay, that is actually a good question. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in my opinion, I would rather, if, if I want to produce instant and maybe commercial camera, uh, commercial photography, I may use the digital one because it's a lot easier, a lot faster, and a lot easier to use. But downside is you must edit it, uh, edit it to enhance the color using Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. While while film film cameras tend to produce a good colors without editing it. So I will. So I will use the film photography as my hobby while digital photography as my income maybe in the near future. Okay, that's good. Okay, thank you, Mr. All right. Um, any other questions? Mm, any other questions from the audience maybe? From the students maybe? If there is no, I think I would like to ask questions. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead, Miss Ria. Okay, hi, Arya. Hi, Miss Ria. 
Are you feeling nervous? Me, yes, yes, me. <laughs> okay. Um, my questions is, um, in your presentations, you mostly talk about um, this type of camera. Uh, should I annotate? Yeah, this type of camera, okay. right? And you rarely mentioned this one. Oh yeah, okay. I think it's not readily, but you did not mention this type at all. Yes. So it's uh, also including in uh, to the film photography, right? The Polaroid right. one. Okay. Um, I I begin to interested here uh, when my friend used uh, the film photography when we um, what is it went to Malang in the, what is it, last month, I suppose. And is there any reason why people are more to this uh, film photography other than the Polaroid one? Because they are both uh, film photography, right? Right. Okay. Uh, I think why people consider the SLR one rather than Polaroid because the SLR ones have a lot of higher spec it can produce some sharper image because you can see here is the polaroids tend to have like this toy cam and it does have a really low quality lens that is used as to print photos just to maybe you can bring it as a party or an occasion while slr is just like a pro level that used as a maybe wedding photography or a portrait photography, just like I mentioned earlier in the Kodak Portra. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. And the, the Esler one has many var variety of lenses. So you can change it based on what are you needing. When you, for example, when you want to switch it up to landscape photography, you can use this lens. And when you want to the portrait photography you can lens you can switch it to portrait lens mm, okay okay that it's really makes sense but the uh, what is it the fail possibility for the polaroid is it bigger or smaller compared to the other film photography okay okay polaroid have a smaller percentage of failure because the machine works like works as a dark room when you process the film to when film to the SLR. Uh, it processes it for you and then prints the photo. You just wait maybe five or ten minutes and the photo is done and you can hang it to, to your wall or your kitchen. So okay. the, the camera does it for you while an SLR you must process it manually. Nice. Thank you, Arya. You're welcome, Miss Lia. Okay. Um, uh, any other questions, maybe? No. Okay. So it's a very good presentation, Arya. So I can see that you are very well prepared. Thank you very uh, much. For yes. this presentation. So you answer it very uh, precisely, I think. All right, well done. So please give a big applause for Arya. Yay. Well done, Arya. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Yay. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, you can choose Arya, who will be the next presenter. Wait, I will be closing my presentation first. <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay, I sincerely appreciate that I've had this opportunity to present my presentation to you. Thank you very much for the attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. For the next, I will choose Indra with the amazing topic. Okay, so um, <laughs> Indra. Okay, Indra, let's go. If you are ready, you can start. Sorry. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Muhammad Indra Taramadan from Higher Intermediate for Elbelia Kayung Sari. Today I will talk about justice for anime fans. Anime is Japanese culture that is very popular around the world. As you can see, the left side is fan screening for Fate Stay Night Heaven's Field anime movie at CGV Grand Indonesia. And the right side is Dokomit 2019. It's uh, anime expo that held on held in Dusseldorf, Germany. These are the proof how popular anime around the world. Anime become popular not only because of the story, but also the graphic quality always evolving through times and era. As we can see at the left side, that is the first anime in the world, Astro Boy at 1963. It just have the black and white picture. And at the right side is Sensei at 1990. As we can see, it's already have the color. And now this, in 21st century, the anime graphic quality turned to like this. The left side is Angel Feet and the right side is Fat Stenak Unlimited Plateworks. As we can see, the graphic is become more smoother, more beautiful, and the effect is better than previous example. However, the problem is how the society call anime fans or anime watcher. The society usually call anime fans by word weebu or otaku. But is that right? The answer is that is so wrong. The word weebu or the word otaku has its own meaning. The society should not call them like that. First, weebu is a word for a fanatic from outside Japan. Weibo is not only like anime culture, but also the Japanese culture like kimono, samurai, and so on and so on. They even love Japanese culture more than its own. Even they do the negative culture for Japan like hikikomori. Hikikomori is Japan Japanese people that isolate him or herself from social life and if we boo or people outside Japan we call it NEET or yes, it's, the sort is need need is abbreviation of not in education employment or training. In short, because common or need is people that is useless, that burden his or her family and country. The Weibo also like to showing Japanese culture and not say about it. For example, they joining cosplay event and use Japanese language even it is broke Japanese. And they use it more than their own. Maybe this cosplay even make the society call anime fans by what people. Even most anime fans are not doing that. Second, otaku is for all hobbies. Otaku is someone that very obsessed and become not for his or her hobby. For example, someone that like music, 
very like much and obsessed about it. He or she will study about it, will increase his or her skill, and then play music, and then make money, make money for from it. Another example is gamers that very serious about his or her game. They winning competition and making YouTube content so they earn money for their life. They use hobby for their life. And then the third. The majority of anime fans just enjoy watching anime. Anime fans just watch anime like people like some ones that watch Hollywood, some ones that that watch K dramas or Sinetron or maybe Bollywood. They just seem like them. We cannot judge people just by what they watch, especially for anime fans. So, as I have mentioned in my points previously, not all anime fans can be categorized as weebo. And word otaku has its own purpose. For my last talk, what if we call anime fans with the word animers? I think that word is more proper, more better, and cooler than we use weebo or otaku set has its own meaning. Okay, thank you. Is there any question? Okay, nice presentation, Indra. Hmm, um, Mr. Akbar, would you like to go first? I thought you... You, Miss Vivi, or me first? Is it me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So, Indra, this is about anime. Um, so, your thesis here, uh, we should not call the anime lovers with weebus and um, otakus because actually those two words have a different meaning. Is that is that correct? Yes. Okay. So um, I just need to ask: Do you have any uh, reason, a reason why, or maybe like sample cases, why the people call the anime lovers like uh, otaku or weebo? Since two, those two words have actually different uh, meaning. Okay, thank you for the question. As I have said before, there is a cosplay event that is very signed and that is a social and it's for all people. All people can watch. Maybe for from there, the society call anime fans with what people. I don't know. Maybe that. And then for what otaku. Why people, why society call is for other because maybe some anime fans or some weebo don't want be called as weebo and instead they use otaku because what otaku is also from J Japan. Uh, I hope that's answered your question. Is there any other question? Mm, okay, so far I think that's that's all. So, Mr. Akbar. Okay. Wow. Anime. Okay. Um. One. Uh. Anime lover. Animers, right? You say. Yes. Right. Okay. So. Uh. You said previously. Right, that we put it's a uh, something that we can say in general that is fanatic, is not in anime, right? And otaku, it's related to hobbies, music, or even game, 
right? Yes, it's all for. Okay. okay, and anime fans is only uh, watch movie, right? Watch anime movie. Yes, the majority of. Yeah, majority, most of them. And my question is, is there any association in Japan? Is there any what we call it as consensus or agreement in Japan that that can give a name? As you suggest, animers, right? Uh, okay, thanks for the question. Okay. Uh, what animers is for? For me myself, and from now I um, rarely watch the like consensus in Japan or something like that because I'm just like I said, I just an anime fan that watching any anime. So I don't know if someone other wants uh, suggest to call anime fans with word animers, but in this representation, that is for me, from from myself. That works for myself. Okay, maybe later on you will search about uh, the facts because you know anime is really a success in the world right nowadays. Yes. yes. There must be a consensus or maybe a specific name. That uh, given to anime itself, right? So people, uh, you know, as fans of anime, you can call yourself, let's say, an animers or something like that. Yes. Maybe you can do that. Maybe later on you can do yes. some research. Yes. Thank you for very much for that. Thank you, Mr. For the question. Is there any question? Can I ask, can... Indra? Okay. Okay. Mr. Andika, uh, may I interrupt for a minute? Uh, Yep. Yep. I I uh, actually already said to Indra, Indra, I think you can coin that word animers, and maybe one day you will be known as the founder of animers. Ah oh, yes. <laughs> yes, maybe I forget it. I'm sorry, Miss. <laughs> But I have said that that's property from from me. So in this presentation, maybe it's the start of that. <laughs> Thank you, Miss. Okay. okay, Mr. Andika. Okay, uh, I don't know that. Uh, so, in my opinion, I think the word that, what is it, otaku, ibu, and so on, is actually in general meaning, is universal that call anything who likes the, what is it, the Japanese things, is like the anime and then culture and so on. As I know, they are called Wiku and also aku, but for let's say like animals, yeah, like Miss Mary said that you can register it as a word, so that the one who really likes anime call animals. So it's actually animals. What is it? Indonesian people, I think, created it uh, because in the term of universal, yeah, anything about Japan call. Otaku and also Wiku. So that's what I know. Yes. And my question is, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, this is about the anime. Mm, what is it? Uh, wait. I need to think what question. I forget. Okay. Uh, here. Uh, why? Do you seek for justice for the one who likes, let's say, any? Why you choose this topic? Uh, Why, okay. as you want the anim lovers call animals. So why you seek justice for the anim lovers? Okay. Only that. Okay. Th thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. It is very good question. First. Uh, because I am is anime fans, and I'm quite disturbed if someone call me Weibo, because as I said, Weibo is a fanatic, and fanatic is negative for me. I think Weibo word is for me is negative. So yes, I just disturbed for 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 that word. And then the second why I uh, said otaku again because some 
and animal friends or and some weebus don't won't be called us weebu so they say them themselves as otaku but i think they are wrong too because otaku has its own purpose and it has its own meaning so yes that's why i just presenting this topic thank you i hope that's answer your question okay good nice one right so any other questions hello uh, indra i think um there will be no question from me but i think uh, i really appreciate that you create animers as a term for anime lovers i guess because we Thank have you. manga lovers like animers i think it's the abbreviation of anime lovers i guess <laughs> because <laughs> weebu is like this negative stigma for yes. people who love anime correct right yes. because when people say oh i really love to watch anime and then people who do not like anime they will say oh you're a weebu you're a weebu and then then that negative stigma will be um stick on people's brain when they say about anime i think really appreciate and i hope that you can register it the one animers or anime lovers i guess great thank you indra <laughs> Thank you, Miss Amel, for the comments. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Mm, uh, no more. Okay, so you can close your presentation, Indra. Okay, everyone, thank you for attend this presentation. Stay safe, stay healthy. Don't forget, Corona is still everywhere. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Stay safe as well for everyone. Okay, now please give a big applause for Indra. Well done, Indra. It's very nice presentation. And we come up to the last presenter. Right, Bagus? Okay, Bagus. Can I start screen now? Yes, sure, sure. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening everyone. My name is Bagus Arjana Iksa. Here, I'm going to present about my topic is taking the guitar lessons. But before I start talking about my topic, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, are you quitters? Right. So this is one of the music instruments that's on the world. And it's one of the most attractive musical instruments in the world because the sounds of the, of the string many people. It's played by famous artists around the world, such as Sung Jung, he plays Finger and Shiran, Taylor Swift, and etc. I'm sure you know one of the songs from this artist. And the guitar has many has, the, has many ways to play it and genre as well, such as finger style, blues, rock, and so on. That's why we will never get bored of the guitar. When we play the guitar or when we hear someone play the guitar, it can also change our feeling. It can change our mood. It could be the atmosphere of the song. It could be encouraging, mellow, energetic, and so on. It's a normal case when we found something attractive and then we went to try it out, like the guitar. I've seen many cases where someone find the guitar attractive and try to play the guitar and practice it. But for some reason, they stop playing the guitar at the beginning. They stop practicing the guitar. Some people say learning the guitar is monotonous. But in fact, 
they stop learning the guitar because they lack of motivation. We always need motivation when we doing something because motivation play a big role when we uh, practicing new skill. And it's gonna be hard when we're doing something and we don't have motivation. The reason why the lack of motivation because they have an unrealistic expectations. When someone hear the guitar sounds is uh, is appealing, the guitar is catchy. They expect to play as good as they heard. Like it's it's normal when you have an expectation. All of us have an expectations, but the thing is they have an unrealistic expectations when the expectation is too high because they can lose motivation easily. They don't play as they expect. They don't play as they heard. And the other reason why the lack of motivation because they want instant result. They want to master the guitar, practice the guitar at the least amount of time. They want the result immediately and master the guitar in a short amount of time. But in fact, nobody has ever gotten good at guitar in a short time, they need to a lot of practice and dedication, and they have to put effort, time, and consistency. In order to be able to play the guitar, they have to practice the guitar one by one. They have to learn the guitar uh, step by step, because the guitar is complex. When we play the guitar, our hands play a different role. Like our right hand have a different job, and left hand has a, also a different job. We have to practice like picking, fingering, transitioning, uh, strumming, and so on. There are many aspects that we need to master first before we uh, play the guitar. And because they want instant result, they do not enjoy their learning process because they want the result as fast as they can. So therefore, the learning the guitar become monotonous and tedious and boring. The next reason is because of the technology and it's related to the previous reason, which is instant result. Technology nowadays encourage people to ignore process. They want to get the result easily. They, they can get a uh, pleasure easily just by accessing the internet. Like when we surfing the internet, we can find a lot of information. For example, if I surfing on YouTube, and find a video about how to how to play guitar. And some of them is like a uh, clip big. The title is convincing people like this video, how to play faster. The title is convincing people. So people think they can play guitar as fast as they can. They expect after watch the video, they got the same level as the video. But in fact, we cannot master the guitar just by watching the video. And finally, they do not feel rewarded. In the guitar, there are certain difficulties. There are certain levels in guitar uh, and also a certain process. So when someone on level one, for example, and comparing to someone on level 10, it's absurd when they think it's impossible. They even have an uh, reach the level two, three, four, and so on. They need to go uh, learning step by step. To summarize, most people stop learning the guitar at the beginning because they cannot manage their expectation. They want instant result and they do not feel successful. But actually playing the guitar is fun and worth to play. So keep practicing and stay motivated. That's all for my presentation. Do you have any questions? Okay, thank you, uh, Bagus. It's a very nice presentation too. Um, Mr. Akbar, do you play guitar also, Mr. Akbar? Uh, I would. Okay, all right. So you can uh, give some questions to Bagus. Okay, so uh, for Bagus, uh, it's quite interesting uh, talking about guitar, right? As we know that in Indonesia, we have uh, 
what we call it, finger style guitarist, Ali Bata, you know? Okay, so yeah, that's so, pretty famous. Uh, even you know the the guitarist of Dragon Force, uh, Herman Lee, right? Herman Lee uh, appreciate him in the way uh, he play. If I'm not mistaken, uh, the song of My Heart Will Go On, holding the guitar and the what we call it, the flute at the same time, and then. Uh, related to the motivation, I believe that all of the what we call it, viewers of uh, Alibata will try to adopt or adapt uh, the way he played. But actually, uh, we need some motivation uh, for that. But uh, as we know that you already explained that we usually what we call it uh, put instant result as our motivation right but how to my question is how to motivate someone to play from the beginning right most people tend to uh, tend to watch the result Right, not the process. How how you motivate someone who play guitar from the beginning? What do you think? Yeah, thank you for the question, Mr. Akbar. That's a good question. So yeah, the guitar is one of the most musical instrument that is attractive. So when someone here they feel like want to play, it, just like someone want watch Alibata. So the question is how to motivate ourselves uh, when it comes to play the guitar. So I think the the, the best way to motivate ourselves is uh, learning step by step. Just when we watch Alipata, uh, it's impossible if 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 he uh, you know if he has haven't hasn't practiced it, he must be uh, practice a lot. So we have to practice step by step what we have to master first, such as uh, fingering, like strumming or finger styling. So there are many aspects that we have to master first. And it's so complex. Though, so the best way is to uh, learn it step by step. Don't you no know, don't don't skip the step. So it's important to stay on our uh, focus on our step rather than the result. Okay, thank you. Welcome. All right. Uh, my question is actually a personal question. Uh, the first, uh, I believe that you play guitar, right? Bagus? Yes. Yes. Of okay. So the first question is why do you choose guitar as? Uh, out of many musical instruments to uh, maybe to play and interested in and the second one who inspires you to play guitar and why okay uh, thank you for the question miss Vivi. so why i choose guitar out of many musical instruments the world because the guitar is so damn attractive so it's like uh the guitar is so catchy make me want to make me want to play it and i i never get bored of the guitar because there is so many uh so many aspects then that i could learn from the guitar that's why i chose the guitar because it's attractive and i never get bored of the guitar and second question is who inspired me uh actually i'm playing guitar uh, I inspired by Eddie van der Meer. It's a yeah YouTuber from Netherlands, and I love her uh, guitar playing. It's so yeah, it's so expert. His his uh, playing the guitar is so good. Okay, thank you, Bagus, for the answers. Uh, the other, please. Questions? 
Any questions? Hello, may I ask the question? So I think, so hello, uh, Bagus. Yes, Miss Amel. Oh, okay, hello. Hello, Bagus, how are you today? I hope you're not nervous. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so I think uh, it is also a personal question. So I know that there are three types of guitar. So correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So I know that there are acoustic guitar, electric guitar, and also ukulele, right? So my question is uh, more or less, it's a personal question for you. So which one of those three types that uh, that is your favorite one? And which one do you think is the most difficult to play? Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question, Ms. Amel. Yep. So I think uh, the I play I play acoustic guitar because I only have acoustic guitar in my house. So I play acoustic guitar, and it's uh, it's a good guitar. I love it. I love to play the guitar. And the second question, which one is the, which one is the most difficult? I think it's of the guitar has the as the uh, as as its own difficult as an as its own difficulty, so I couldn't say which one is harder because I haven't even tried like ukulele or rock. So I would say uh, currently acoustic guitar is the most difficult because that's the guitar what I know what I played. Mm -hmm. I mean. Okay, thank you so much for your answer, Bagus. Okay, uh, thank you, Miss Amel. Thank um, you. Awesome. Any other questions? Um, I no? may have no question, but I do have a request. Oh, you have request, Miss Ria? All right. Yeah, since you say, uh, since your topic is guitar, would you like to play a guitar for us to close the presentation today? <laughs> That's <Yeah>. my request, <laughs> Bagus. Yeah, but actually I'm not my my own house. It's my, oh. you know, my, my brother's house. So I don't have a guitar in here. I'm so sorry, oh. Miss Ria. <laughs> That's, uh, we were already expecting what a that. shame <laughs> yeah but that's okay it's play a guitar and sing bagus. for us play the guitar <laughs> and sing for us bagus Musim party. Musim party. <laughs> all right i think uh you, no more questions so you can close your presentation yes. uh, if there's no more question i'd like to end my presentation Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, could you please stop sh uh, sharing? Uh, thank you. So, uh, thank you so much for the presenters and audience uh, learners who are here today. So, it's, uh, I will give you a very big appreciation for the presenters. You all did a good job, well presentation, anything. So I really appreciate your effort. Well done and good luck for your future and the poor. Just can say that stay healthy and good luck for your future. All right, so please give a big applause. Great Yay. job, everybody. Great Yay. job, great Yay. job. Everybody. Going well to miss done, you guys. Everyone. Well done, yeah. learners. Well done. So, Going to miss you, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Mr. Picture, Akbar, do you have something to say for our presenters? Uh, keep trying and uh, what we call it? Try to what we call it? Uh, train your critical thinking so you can uh, think deeper and deeper later on. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, Ms. Tati, do you have anything to say for your learners? Uh, thank you so much, learners, for your effort this term. Well done, everybody. Thank you for finishing everything without 
any complaints at all. So I'm very proud of you. I hope you keep learning. I hope you keep improving your English and um, may, may this be uh, the first step of you becoming a more fluent English speaker, okay? Okay, Miss. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, one of you from uh, the presenters would like to say something about your process in learning English in India so far. And yeah, anything you can say. Maybe one of you can say something. Don't cry, everybody. <laughs> And then they all started complaining. Oh, <laughs> this is like the worst, the hell. <laughs> I need one of you to say something about your process of learning until you get uh, to achieve uh, in this higher intermediate mm -hmm. four. We are also having another learners here so that maybe they will be inspired by you until this far. Come on, Indra. One... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> big brain time, Han. Uh, big brain time, Indra. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you for the chance, my friend. Okay, learning in Lia, I think it's very nice. It's better place for me to learn English because in the middle of Lia, I ever go to another course and then I'm back here. Okay. It's, I think this is, uh, you know, it's very comfortable comfortable place to learn English. Um, or of my teacher, Mr. Akbar, Mr. Ria, Miss Tati. And another teacher is very nice to me. I off in, in the middle of this speaking or <laughs> the uh, something. I often cut it because I'm very, you know, I sometimes cannot break my speak my mouth, and but <laughs> they are not angry. <laughs> and I'm what I want to say is I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. That's rude. And thank you to all teacher at Lia that have teach me until this point. I hope this is the start <coughs> of our success. Amen. Everyone. Amen. Amen. Yes, I ask uh, for teacher and others in this room to pray for us because we are at already 12. Of course, after this is higher, is we are we're going to college. Yes, we are going to college. We're going to college. <laughs> Reality came. Reality <laughs> just hit hard. <laughs> For our junior, I hope you are have spirit to keep learning in here because yes, Woo! Ooh, that's place spirit for you. in here, Indra. I, okay. I, because I have tried some place. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Thanks for your Thank friends. you well, so for much. Me, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the chance. I expect to miss Fifi. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Indra. That's so inspiring. Yeah. Thank you so much. So I think uh, this is uh, it's a wrap. So thank you so much for today's session. It's really uh, you did a very good job. So thank you so much for coming, for joining. So I think I will close our session. And I hope we can meet you one day again. Okay. 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 I hope we will meet again. So, <laughs> so, right. so keep on learning English because okay. there's there are so many opportunities ahead for you if you learn English more. All right. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. I will see you again oh. soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. I can finally sleep peacefully. Yes, you can sleep tight. Bye bye. Have a great, have a great rest, everyone. Thank you. Mm. <laughs>